Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, we're going to directly calculate the x coordinate of the centroid of this wedge that's being cut off at the end. What we're going to do here is take a very small volume element, small dv. The dimension of the dv is equal to the width, which is equal to the z. The distance from there to there is z. The distance from there to there, which is the height, would be y. And then the thickness here would be a small little dx. So the thickness here would be a small little dx. We know that ultimately the reason why we're doing this is ultimately we know that the equation to find the x-coordinate of the centroid that's equal to the integral of the x-coordinate of each individual little piece, so this would be the x-coordinate right there, that would be distance x away from the origin, this distance right here, that would be equal to x times the volume of that, which would be small little dv, we have to integrate from x equals 0 to x equals 6, because the distance from there to there is 6. Let me move that a little bit so we don't get confused. So from 0 to 6, and we divide that by the integral of the dv from 0 to 6. So that's how we find the centroid. Now what we need to do is we have to multiply the dv in here times the x coordinate of the centroid, which in this case is equal to x distance away from the yz plane. So this can be written as the integral of x times dv, which is z times y times dx from 0 to 6, all divided by the integral of dv, which is z times y times dx. All right, now obviously we can't integrate x times, y, uh, x times z times y times dx. We have to have the same variables dx. But first of all, we can see here that z never changes. z is equal to a constant. The whole wedge is equal to 2 units wide. So z can be replaced by a 2. And y and x have a relationship along this line right here. If you take a look at this line, that has the a structure of a y equals mx plus b equation, which is, of course, a straight line. We need to find the slope. The slope will be the drop. You can see that it drops from 4 to 0 in a distance from 0 to 8. So that means that y is equal to minus 4 divided by 8 times x plus, and the y-intercept would be at y equals 4. So the equation becomes y equals minus 1 half x plus 4, which can be substituted into our equation here and here, and then we replace z by 2, and that means we can then integrate both the numerator and the denominator. Here the limits are also from 0 to 6. This is equal to, since z is a 2, I can take that outside integral sign, times integral of x times y, and y is a minus 1 half x plus 4 times dx from 0 to 6, divided by, here also I can take the 2 outside integral sign, from 0 to 6 times y, which is 1 half x plus 4 times dx. Then we can multiply this x times the, what's inside the parentheses, and the 2's can cancel out. That gives me the integral from 0 to 6 of the quantity minus 1 half x squared plus 4x times dx, divided by, in the denominator, from 0 to 6, we get minus 1 half x plus 4 times dx. And now we're ready to integrate both the numerator and the denominator, which allow us to find out what the x coordinate of the centroid is. This is equal to the numerator, we get minus 1 half x cubed over 3 plus 4x squared over 2, evaluated from 0 to 6, divide that by, the denominator is 1 half x squared over 2 plus 4x over 1, evaluated from 0 to 6. The numerator, we have x cubed, uh, that means when we plug in the 6, obviously when we plug in 0 in both, in the numerator and denominator, we get nothing, so we don't have to do that. But plug in 6, 6 cubed is 216 divided by a negative 6, that would be minus 64. Nope, nope, no, I'll take that back, minus 36. Minus 36 plus 36 times 2 would be 72, all divided by, here we get 36 divided by 4, which is, and I forgot my minus sign, can't forget my minus sign, that would be a minus 9 and plus 24. So the numerator becomes 36 divided by the denominator, which is 15, 
And let's see what that's equal to. That looks like 36 divided by 15. Yes, it is 2.4. And if you go back a few videos, we actually did this by seconding this out. And it looks like we got the exact same result as we did a couple videos ago. But here we calculated it directly by taking a small little volume element, finding the x coordinate of the centroid right there. The distance from the yz plane is equal to x. We went ahead and plug that into the equation. Of course, we need to define the relationship between the y variable and the x variable in order to be able to have everything in terms of x, and that way we can integrate it since our differential, the little thickness here, was in terms of dx. Now, in the next video, we're going to do the same thing, but in this case, we're going to find the y coordinate of this cutoff wedge to see that with the same uh, with the same technique, we can also find the y coordinate and even the z coordinate. Although in this case, z coordinate, we can just look at it by inspection. We know that for z, it's equal to 1 because everything is symmetric in the z direction. So stay tuned if you want to see how we use the very same technique to find the y coordinate of this particular shape as well.